With the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let's acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned. In my thoughts and in my words, and what I have done, and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, my Virgin, all of the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to a God of our God. May Almighty God of mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to lasting life. Amen. Lord of mercy, the Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. The Lord have mercy. Let us pray. May the venerable exercises of holy devotion shape the hearts of your faithful Lord to welcome worthily the Paschal mystery and proclaim the praises of your salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The angel brought me, Ezekiel, back to the entrance of the temple of the Lord, and I saw water flowing out from beneath the threshold of the temple toward the east. For the facade of the temple was toward the east, like water, the water flowed down from the right side of the temple, south of the altar. He led me outside by the north gate and around to the outer gate facing the east, where I saw water trickling from the right side. Then, when he had walked off to the east with a measuring cord in his hand, he measured off a thousand cubits and had me wade through the water, which was ankle deep. He measured off another thousand and once more had me wade through the water which was now knee deep. Again he measured off a thousand and had me weighed. The water was up to my waist. Once more he measured off a thousand, but there was now a river through which I could not wade. For the water had risen so high it had become a river that could not be crossed except by swimming. He asked me, Have you seen this, son of man? And he brought me to the bank of the river where he had me sit. Along the bank of the river I saw very many trees on both sides. He said to me, This water flows into the eastern district down upon the Arabah, 
and empties into the sea the salt waters which it makes fresh. Wherever a river flows, every sort of living creature that can multiply shall live, and there shall be abundant fish. For wherever this water comes, the sea shall be made fresh. Along both banks of the river, with trees of every kind shall grow. Their leaves shall not fade, nor their fruit fail. Every month they shall bear fresh fruit, for they shall be watered by the flow from the sanctuary. Their fruit shall serve for food and their leaves for medicine. The word of the Lord. The Lord of hosts is with me. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. The Lord of hosts praise me. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. God is our refuge and our strength and ever-present help in distress. Therefore, we fear not, though the earth be shaken and mountains plunge into the depths of the sea. The Lord of hosts is with us, but a strong God of Jacob. There be stream whose runlets gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. God is in its midst, it shall not be disturbed. God will help it at the break of dawn. The Lord of hosts is with me, our stronghold is the God of Jacob. The Lord of Host is with me. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. Come, behold the deeds of the Lord, the astounding things he has wrought on earth. The Lord of hosts is with me. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. Give me back the joy of your salvation. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. There was a feast of the Jews. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem at the Sheep Gate a pool called in Hebrew Bethesda with five porticos. In these lay a large number of ill, blind, lame, and crippled. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew they had been ill for a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the, the pool when the water is stirred up. While I'm on my way, someone else gets down there before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your mat and walk. Immediately the man became well, took up his mat and walked. Now that, was, that day was a Sabbath. 
So the Jews said to the man who was cured, It is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your mat. He answered them, The man who made me well told me, Take up your mat and walk. They asked him, Who is the man who told you, Take it up and walk? The man who was healed did not know who he was, for Jesus had slipped away since there was a crowd there. After this, Jesus found him in the temple area and said to him, Look, you are well. Do not see me anymore, so that nothing worse can happen to you. The man went and told the Jews that Jesus was the one who made him well. Therefore, the Jews began to persecute Jesus because he did this on a Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. In our first reading from Ezekiel, he has a vision of this water flowing up from the temple. It gets deeper and deeper, and wherever it goes, it brings life, abundant life. It turns salt, salt sea, salt waters into fresh. So it can multiply, every sort of creature can multiply, shall live. It's the abundant fish. It makes fresh and pure. So the image of what God does is the temple is the image for God. It's, it's the living water flows forth from God for us to purify us. Remember, woman at the well, Jesus said, I'll give you living water. And well being Jesus, He's living water. It makes pure, it makes fresh, it heals eternally. And so we have the, the crippled man who's been at the, at the pool of, of Bethesda. He wants to be healed. Nothing wrong with that. And Jesus heals lots of people. But what Jesus wants to do most of all is change our hearts. He wants our conversion. Because that's life changing for all eternity. This body dies. Any physical healing we see is only why we have, why we live on this planet. Change of heart, conversion, that's for eternity. And that's what God wants. He wants our eternal salvation. An eternal change of heart. We're body and soul. Well, you know, physical healing for the body is one thing, but what affects the soul for eternity is more important. And so, yes, yeah, okay to pray for physical healing. But in addition to that, Lord, change my heart. Change me, Lord. May it tap into that living waters as you make me fresh, make me pure. Because that's what we have to be in heaven. Pure. But only for purgatory, help me now. Change me, help me now to get through these habitual sins. And so we can pray for physical healing, but don't focus on the physical healing. Pray on, focus on conversion of heart and mind. For that has eternal consequences. Amen. Amen. Bring out your petitions to God, our mighty Lord. For all Christians that they imitate the love and concern Jesus had for the poor and the sick, we pray to the Lord. Lord. 
where religious liberty may be protected and held in high esteem, we pray to the Lord. Put into abortion, euthanasia, and the death penalty, and for a greater respect of all life, we pray to the Lord. For all of us gather here that Jesus may be the center of our lives, we pray to the Lord. For our prisoners, family members, and friends who are ill, and for those who have contracted the coronavirus, that God be their refuge and their strength, we pray to the Lord. For our friends, family members, and prisoners who have died, especially Michael Devon, the intention of this Mass, and for all those who have died as a result of the coronavirus, that God in His mercy and love grant them a place in the heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Please add your own intentions in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord grant us the grace and the virtue of change of heart. Hear our prayers and answer according to your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Prayers in our soul. Lord, teach you to be generous. Teach you to serve you as you deserve. To give the God. To fly on the night and be To toil on the night and sleep and rest. To labor and not to rest for your Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. For through you have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will come for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. For through you have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the body and work of human hands have become our spiritual drink. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice be yours, except O God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the glory of the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. We offer to you, O Lord, these gifts which you yourself have bestowed. May they attest to your care as creator for this our mortal life. And effect in us the healing that brings us in mortality. 
So the human race will become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your spirit that they may become the body and blood of the beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost, and could not approach you, you love us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, have some over to death, and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become a lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the set to pass over with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took breath. And give me thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat them. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was at the end, no one was about to reconcile all things himself, for his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice to fill the fruit of the vine, and once more give me thanks, and the chalice to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood. The blood of the new eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection to the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victory reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, 
and grant that the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they began to run body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and Sister Bishop, help us to work together for the coming of the kingdom and to the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then free at last from the wound of corruption, and made full into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness that thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, then forward teaching we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as with the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ has said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grace you grant for peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. The last is called the Supper of the Lamb. The Lord, I am not worthy that you shall enter under my roof, but only say the word that my soul shall be.